Hi, everybody. Hi, Regina. Hi, Colleen. <laughs> this is having a conversation with Colleen and Nicole about who loves who more. And I win. I love you both more. <laughs> I win because I got the last word. But Nicole will pop in here in just a second with her last word because she knows I can't reply while I'm doing a live. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> She sent a message and said, I'll fight you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love all of you so, so much. It's so good to see everybody. You guys, it's the last day of 2021 and not a moment too soon. I know I said that on Tuesday, but now it's officially here. We are in the last day, the last day of 2021. Now, I don't know what kind of year you had, but if your year was anything like my year, <laughs> we're just ready to put it to bed. Let's just put it to bed, right? And can we just start fresh tomorrow? Can like 2022, can that be like a redo of, of 2020 and 2021? Because like, I feel like we should be given back, right? Because I feel like we've lost a lot. A lot of things were stolen from us over the past two years, like our sanity, perhaps. Um, and I think, I think like we deserve a do-over. I'm just saying, I mean, the powers that be, I hope you're hearing me. I think we deserve a do-over. I know I speak for myself and I, a few of you out there <laughs> who've had a, um, a very challenging two years, right? But you know, it's great. It's great because no matter what 2022 brings, we know a couple of things. We know, number one, that our survival rate is 100%, right? We made it. We made it. We all woke up this morning. And I don't really think there's anything that beats that. But we know that, right? We know that. We know that going into 2022, no matter what 2022 brings, we made it through 2020 and 2021. Wow. Say that real fast. <laughs> We've made it this far, right? And I feel like things have got to get better, right? They just have to. I know we're not going to wake up tomorrow morning again. Everything is going to be sunshine and rainbows, but it might be. You just don't ever know. You never know. So another thing that I definitely know for sure is that in spite of all of the hardships that I've had this year, you guys have been a constant in my life, and I am so thankful and so grateful that you have allowed me to be a part of your day a couple of times a week. You guys, I stepped out on my own in my own name this year, not just in my personal life, but here in my business, and I I could not be more proud of myself. I could not be more proud of the community that we have built together. I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for you guys. And I want you to know how much you're loved, how much you are appreciated, and how much I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next in 2022. And we're all going to go there together, right? So yes, yes, yes. Good things, right? Good things are coming. They just have to. They just have to. And even if they don't get here real fast, that's okay because we've all got each other. So, all right, let's talk about our kits for today. Actually, let's let's not. Let's let's take a second. Let's take a second. Because I got a little little housekeeping. First and foremost, I want to apologize for everybody who thought that there was a Michaels class, including myself, on Wednesday. I, for whatever reason, had it on my calendar that I was supposed to have a Michaels class this week. And <laughs> When I finally got in touch with everybody at uh, Michael's, they were like, we don't have classes until the 1st of January. So I apologize for confusing anybody about that. I was also very confused, um, but I've got new classes coming up with Michael. So no fear, right? Uh, those are not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Uh, for my hard wires, you guys, we've got new members in the hardwired group as of this week. I'm so excited. And I just wanted to take another minute to say, 
The Hardwired group is open for enrollment for just a couple more days. So if you want to come and hang out in the Hardwired group, now is the time. The group will close for a whole month and then we'll open back up again for more members because we only let new people in once a month. Now is your opportunity to do so. Um, so if you want to come and be a part, please do so. So what you do is you go over to the group, you request request to join the group. You have to answer the group questions. Number one, we won't let you in the group if you don't. Number two, we don't know where to send your invoices if you don't answer those questions. So you have to answer those questions. Please don't, don't apply to the group just to find out how much it costs because all of that information is visible via like the group information. So you can see all that without having to actually apply for the group. So you can see how much it costs and what you can expect. Um, and we'd love to have you. We've got a ton of new members and I cannot wait to see what happens in that group going forward because I've got big plans. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like outside our little box of Facebook lives. So uh, looking forward to what comes in 2022 for the hardwired group. Uh, but right here in the live wires, oh my gosh, you guys, we're still going strong. Bring your friends, right? This group needs to continue to grow as well. So um, I can't wait for what happens next. I, I don't know what that means. I just keep saying that. I don't know what is happening next. But for whatever reason, I feel like something, something's coming. I don't know what. Something's coming. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about our Feel Good Friday show for what everyone is actually here for. So Feel Good Friday, for those of you who are new and don't know what our Feel Good Friday sh shows are all about, it is easy to create instant gratification jewelry. Um, I have all of the kits for the jewelry you're going to see available in my Etsy shop right now, as well as the maker mixes. So these pieces of jewelry, there's always more than one project. I've actually got, uh, I've got five kits and one maker mix. I'm going to show those all to you. You can very easily put these together. So it's super simple jewelry, but it's beautiful stuff, right? That's, I, I love instant gratification jewelry. So we don't focus on technique on Fridays nearly as much as we do on Tuesdays, but we always have a good time. Super casual, laid back. So if you're ready to rock and roll, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, I do wanna mention before we get started, before you see all of these gorgeous beads, I want you to know where they came from, okay? So Danielle Wicks, this show is just, this is just a, this is my homage to Danielle Wicks. <laughs> <laughs> These projects would not be possible without her amazing beads. So please, if you have time or you are looking to buy some new beads, go check out Danielle Wicks's Etsy shop. Let me give you the banner real quick so you can go check her out. Etsy.com slash shop slash slash Danielle Wicks. She has the most amazing beads and she... <sighs> It's, it's not like she's a bead supplier. That's not really the thing. The, you're not buying from a bead supplier. You're buying from an artist. She's a jewelry artist. She's a designer. She works for John Bead. She teaches Michael's classes. She's an amazing human being. And I'd like to buy from her and I like to send people her way because she's not a bead supplier. So when she buys beads and stocks them in her shop, she's actually coming at it from an artist's point of view, which is different right? It's different than going to like the big like shipwreck beads or something like that, right? Because you're going to Danielle and Danielle's putting things in her shop that she likes <laughs> and she has really good taste. So um, I encourage you to go and check out her shop because she just, she just rocks. She has great taste and she sends me the most wonderful goodies. So I'm using a lot of those in my projects today. If you want more, go check out her shop. I've got a code. It's Sarah 20 for 20% off. Uh, these wonderful items. Some of these bees also came from Sam. You guys know like Sam and Danielle. That's just where I get all my goodness from. I, that's just the truth. <laughs> I have really good friends. And so there are some wonderful beads from Sam included in these kits as well. Okay. So I'm going to start with the maker mix and then we're going to get right to it. I've got three bracelets and two pairs of earrings. Oh, and you guys are going to love them. I just know it. I just know it. All right. So I'm going to turn around. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Enough talking. Enough talking. Let's get started with these amazing things. Okay. So yes, Donna says Danielle Wex beads are amazing, right? And she's amazing. So it just makes it doubly special. And Sam is amazing, which makes it doubly special. I just, I don't know. I just, I just love, I love everybody. Can you tell? <laughs> 
All right. So this is our first, this is our only maker mix actually for the week. I think I'm going to cut our maker mixes down to one a week just because um, that means I can really focus on one at a time. So this maker mix, this one's sassy all sassy so it's pinks and reds because as much as you guys hate it that we go from holiday to holiday the truth is it's time to start working on valentine's day jewelry like right now like if you haven't started yet you're almost behind so this one is absolutely beautiful and you guys know i'm not much of a pink person but i really love this because of the colors of the pinks that are in here so there's a beautiful check glass pink flower in here there are some check glass drops some saturn beads there are some daisy spacers some beautiful check glass rondelles as well as check glass uh, bicones there are crystal bicones as well and then the faceted glass this is one of my favorites. This bead is red and a pink shift. It's like hot pink and red all in one, which makes it totally acceptable to mix your pinks and reds together. And I love it when you can do crazy things like that. So I know it's not super crazy, but I mean, for some people, that's way out of their comfort zone. So this is a really beautiful one. It's called Sassy. So if you're looking for it, this is the one, and there are plenty of these, so don't feel like you're going to miss out if you don't go get it right the second. Uh, I made sure I had a bunch of these because I knew this was going to be a popular one. So there you go. That's the Maker Mix for this week. Don't forget that you can enter to enter your name into a drawing to win something fun if you make something with a Maker Mix and post your pictures of it. Okay, now... I don't really know where to get started with this one. So I think I'm going to start with my favorites because I have a feeling that they will sell out quick. And I want to be sure that you guys get to see how to put them together before you go buy them up. Okay, so I've got bracelets and I've got two different ones. They're both exactly the same, but one is in a blue and silver and one is in a green and antique brass. So I'm going to show you the finished one and then we're going to put the green one together. So I have the finished blue one right here. It's a double strand look at this check glass. These rondelles are like, I don't even know how to describe them. They're just like these beautiful little landscape pictures in each bead. And they're not really, but that's just what it reminds me of. They're like little paintings in every single bead. So you've got two strands of gorgeous check glass beads. You've got a really cool decorative clasp that attaches to some leather USA cord and then you've got your charms. So this one is blue and silver and they're listed separately. They're two separate listings. Okay. So this is one. The other is put together the exact same way, but it's these yummy greens. So I figured out of the two of them, somebody is going to love them either one or the other or both. Look at the greens. They're just beautiful. It's like a little mini planet, right? Look how fun. Every single one of them has their own little personality. They're just really beautiful. So this is the green and like honey and brown and just, oh, they're just pretty. Okay, so we're going to put one of these together and I'll show you. So part of it's already ready. So I've got a lot of things to show you. So wanted to be sure we had plenty of time. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to finish off the second strand, right? Because it's a two strand bracelet. One strand is already completed. This one is partially completed. We're going to add the beads to it. So we're going to use some eye pins to do that. Okay. So I'm gonna grab some of the eye pins and tools would be nice. I didn't even grab my tools today. I was so excited to get to see you guys. Didn't even grab my tools. Okay. So I'm going to take an eye pin and I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up since I've already got some started here. If this is your first bead, obviously you don't need to open the eye just yet, but I'm going to open up the eye. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the loop on the previous bead. Okay, and I'm going to add my bead to it. Now, just simple loops with this. And there are no jump rings in between here. So they're all connected together just like a rosary chain. Okay, so I'm going to take the wire right where it is exiting the bead. And I'm going to just bend that right over the top of the bead. I'm going to come in. Oops. I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch. Okay. And 
I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and roll back to close up my loop, right? And I'm just gonna continue because I need to add three more beads to this strand. So again, just taking an eye pin, opening up that loop. I'm gonna thread that on. Okay, we'll do a few more of these simple loops. Now you can do wrapped loops if you want to. This is your kit. Once you buy it, you can put it together however you want to. You could even, because there's enough beads here, you could even turn this into a necklace instead of making it a two strand bracelet if you wanted to, because there's plenty of beads in this kit. Okay, so just rolling that back to close up that loop one at a time. It works up pretty quickly. But I did want to save time. I didn't think it would be, <laughs> I didn't really think it would be very time wise to do all of these beads with you guys together. Because we do have other fun things. You guys, I've got Valentine's kits. I know it's early, but I do. I've got a couple of kits that have hearts in them. And I have a huge crowd of people watching that absolutely love hearts. So definitely want to stick around for those. All right. So this last bead on this one. <clears throat> and then we'll put this bracelet together. Oh, we need to, we need to put this guy on a head pin. We'll do that too before we put everything together. Okay. Last simple loop here. All right, so we've got our two strands. Are those not beautiful? I just can't help but look at these beads. They're just like little, little works of art. I know, I just keep going on and on about them, but they're so pretty. I just can't help it. I just can't help it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this guy on a head pin because he goes with our little charm that we're gonna hang from our piece of leather here. So I'm going to do a wrapped loop on him. So I'm just going to put it down on an, on a head pin and we're going to do a wrapped loop. So this time I'm going to grab the wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm going to bend the wire over the top of the pliers. That's going to give me the room that I need for the wire wraps. When we get to that point, I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers. I'm taking the wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers. Okay. I need to finish that loop. So I need to move that bottom barrel to the top so that I can guide that wire over that closes up our loop. And now I'm going to wire wrap between the loop that we just created and the top of our bead in that space that our pliers made for us, right? All right, so there's our wrapped loop. I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool and trim off the excess. If you can't get in there really close, you can always come in and tuck in what is might be sticking out with your pliers, okay? All right, now we're ready to put this together. So we've got some jump rings here. It's like a bunch of jump rings. <laughs> and we're gonna take a look. Let's take a look at the finished one to show you. So we're gonna start out with our little leather section here. Now this is gonna be where you can make your bracelet. Um, you're gonna adjust the size of your bracelet, okay? So because everybody gets the same amount of beads, but you've got a nice long piece of leather here. And the loop of the leather is where your clasp is gonna attach. So you wanna be sure that you've got a good size loop. It doesn't have to be huge, but you do wanna have, you know, a little, a little loop here, just part of, the, part of the design. So I'm just doing an overhanded knot. I'm gonna cinch this down, right? So that makes a good loop for my clasp to attach to, right? Just like that. Now, the part where you're going to adjust is, and it doesn't make it an adjustable bracelet, but what I mean is to determine how long you want your bracelet to be is going to determine where you put your next knot in this little section. Um, for about a seven and a half standard bracelet, you want that space to be in about an inch and a half between your knots. That's going to give you, once the whole thing is put together, about a seven and a half inch bracelet. If you need your bracelet to be a little bit longer, then obviously you want your next knot to be a little bit further down. Or if you need it to be smaller, if you need your bracelet to be smaller than that, then you want to make your, your knot closer to this one, right? So you've got plenty of leather to work with. It should accommodate a lot of different sizes. 
Okay, so I'm just going to tie another overhanded knot. Now, this normally is where we put a button, right? Because we do a lot of these bracelets where we have a button, we don't use a clasp, the button goes through this loop or the button goes through this loop. Not for this one. For this one, this is actually where the end of our bracelet uh, is going to attach. So one side is going to have our charm and our flower. And I'm going to go ahead and attach those with two jump rings. Okay, so I'm just going to hook that on. And then I just want to put that on the outer of the two leather pieces here. Close that back. Open that up and do the same thing. So we just want to put our flower next to it. Okay. Now the end of our bracelet, one of the ends is going to be here and the other end is going to be on that inner piece of the leather. So let me show you. I'm going to take two jump rings. So a jump ring is going to go on the end of one of our bead chains. I'm gonna hook that to the loop on our clasp. We'll do the same thing with another with the other one. So another jump ring here. Okay. Close that back. So those are that's one end, right? And now the other ends of this are going to attach to that inner strand of the leather. See how we've got the end of our bracelet on the inside and then our charms on the outside. Okay. So I don't know why I have so many jump rings out. So just same thing as before. Just want to use a jump ring right? Attach that to that inner leather piece. Ah! I don't think I opened my jump ring big enough. Let's do it on the leather end first, All right? And there's our strand. Close that back. And then we'll do the other one. I know it kind of looks like a mess at the moment, but you'll, you'll see. It makes sense. Once you get everything together, it makes more sense. So there's the other one. There. All right. And there's the green. And of course, you can come in and trim off your your end of your leather, right? You don't have to keep it long like that. But there's the green in antique brass. You've got a green flower and an antique brass charm with a little leaf accent. So there's the green and then the blue and the silver, which also has one of those charms and a beautiful leaf check glass from Sam. This is kind of a mix of Sam and Danielle here. Those are so pretty. I love, love, love them. And I'm always a fan of, for one thing, I love double strand bracelets. The more strands, the better. But I love the leather accents. It's, for one thing, you've got a really open place here. You're not dealing with little tiny hardware. So it's easy to get on and off. But the leather just kind of adds like such a natural earthy kind of feel to things. It always just changes the entire personality of a piece of jewelry when you add a piece of leather. Whether it's brown, whether it's black, whether it's real leather or fake leather, it doesn't really make any difference. It just really changes the whole personality. So there you go. Those are our bracelet kits. Well, we've got one more bracelet kit, but these are the two so far. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sit these over to the side. Sam, Sam approves. Sam says he would wear them. That's like, an, that's the, that's one of the biggest compliments I think I've ever gotten. <laughs> if Sam will wear it, I've done good. I've done good. All right, so we've got another bracelet here we're going to put together. This one is super cool too. This one is a chip bracelet. And has a feather accent 
and I went ahead, these were flat and I actually went ahead and curved all of these with my bracelet bending pliers because I know that there are some of you out there that don't have the bracelet bending pliers, but wanted this to be curved or would have wanted it to be curved. So I went ahead and did that for all of the, all of them. I know I'm crazy, but I did. I took, I took the time to make sure that everybody got what they needed. Okay. So these little chip beads, you guys, these are, um, how light chips. So they're not like, they're not fancy gemstones, but they're still super, super cool. So one side of our bracelet is going to have our chips, right? We're going to put some chips on an eye pin. And then I've I in, I included some extension chain because again, I like to make sure that lots of sizes are represented, right? So I'm going to save three of those to go at the end of our extension chain. The other side of our bracelet, oh, by the way, in between each one of these little sections of chips, we're going to put little charms because why not? <laughs> right? Just showing you where we're, where we're going with all of this, right? And then the other side of this is going to be some faux suede, right? So this is a half and half asymmetrical bracelet, but it ends up looking so cool. So we're going to put this together really quickly. Okay. So I'm going to take an eye pin and I'm going to thread on my chips. Some of these have already been done. And we're going to do just a simple loop. And again, you can always substitute and do wrapped loops if you want to. Totally up to you. Okay. All right, so that's ready to go, okay? So let's go ahead and put this, this side of our bracelet together, and then we'll do the other side. So I believe I started out with a four, four millimeter little jump ring here. Actually, I didn't. This one was a straight up regular jump ring. Okay, so I'm gonna open a jump ring. I'm gonna thread it on to one end of our little feather. I'm going to thread on a charm, okay, and then I'm going to thread on one of our little chip sections. So it's three chips on an eye pin, okay, closing that back, and I'm just going to repeat that. So I'm going to do another jump ring onto the end of that one. We're going to thread on our charm, and then the next little chip section. If you're like me, you've got a ton of chip beads and you don't really know what to do with them, or maybe you don't have a ton of chip beads, but you really like them, but don't know what to do with them. This is a great project for chip beads. And you can make a matching necklace for this very easily. Okay, another charm. And then another of our little chip beads. Okay, another jump ring. Oh, goodness. Sorry. That scared me. <laughs> it might have scared you too. So I apologize. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Okay. All right. So there's one side of our bracelet. Is that not cool? I just, I don't know. Something about this bracelet just makes me really, really happy. Okay. So on this side of our bracelet, we're going to have, because our ends here, we're going to open a jump ring. We're going to put on our clasp. Okay. We'll go ahead and attach that to that last little simple loop, okay? Now the other side of our bracelet, we're gonna do a little bit larger of a jump ring. I'm gonna start with a little tiny jump ring. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take, take this little four millimeter. I'm gonna attach that to the other side of our feather. I think I called it a leaf earlier. It's definitely a feather. Okay. Now I've got a larger jump ring here. I'm going to take my, my suede lace and this is another um, option for adjusting the size. Okay. So you've got plenty of the faux suede lace um, and you can make it shorter or longer, right? Use up your, all the length that you've got here to adjust if you need a larger bracelet or a smaller bracelet. I'm going to do just a lark's head knot. So I'm going to come and find the middle of my piece of faux suede lace. 
I'm going to take the loop and stick it through my larger jump ring. Okay. And then I'm going to take the two ends and take those through that loop. All right. And we're just doing, <laughs> we're doing nothing because I pulled it all the way through. That was too funny. Okay. This time let's pay attention to what we're doing. Okay. Okay, so Lark's head knot with our faux suede lace. You just want to cinch that down, All right? Pull a little at a time. Tighten that down, okay? So that's going to attach to our little jump ring here. And I, I encourage you to hold on let's do this part and then i'll tell you I always get ahead of myself so i encourage you once you've tied your lark's head knot to come to the back of this and put a little bit of glue right there that'll keep your knot secure so it won't come undone you just need to put like just a little on that inside of your knot right that'll be the back you won't ever see it okay so you've got your two strands you're going to adjust your size accordingly to what you need for your bracelet okay so i'm going to trim mine off making an allowance for the cord end so i'm going to mark it with my finger i'm going to trim off okay now i'm going to take my cord end and it's a fold over cord end you're going to take the two pieces of the suede lace you're going to sit those inside, right? Then you're going to fold that top flap over those pieces. And then you're going to close the other sides down. And I like to get them started with my fingers. And then I'll come in with my pliers and close them down all the way. Okay. Nice and flat and nice and secure. So pull on it. Make sure that you've got a good closure on that. And then you're just going to add your jump ring to that. And before we close that jump ring, I'm going to add my extension chain. This is also another option for uh, changing up the length, right? And at the end of our extension chain, let me lay this out so you can see how cool it looks first. So you see you've got your beads and your charms on one side and your faux suede lace on the other side. You've got your feather in the center, right? And then I would just take the leftovers of the beads, put those down on a head pin and do a wrapped loop. And we're just going to attach those to the end of our extension chain just to dress that extension chain up. If you've been with me for a while, you know how I feel about extension chains. They're a necessary evil. They're not my favorite thing in the world. So I like to add beads to them just to give them a little bit more personality than just having a chain hanging there. Plus, I love movement and dangles, and it's a great opportunity to make a dangle. So <laughs> we're going to go up and over. Rotate the pliers, take the wire over to close up our loop. Before we do that, though, we're going to thread it on to that last link of our chain. Okay. And I'm going to hold that loop with my bent chain nose pliers and do some wraps. About three wraps. And then I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim that off. Now, you don't have to do the extension chain, right? If you're going to make this bracelet for yourself, you're not going to sell it. You're not going to give it as a gift or whatever. Um, you can make this bracelet whatever size you want it to be and just save the extra beads and the head pin because um, they all come in your kit. So you've got it, um, but you don't have to use it, right? It's just there if you need it. So that's our other bracelet project. Super cool. I love this one. This one just, I don't know. There's something about this kind of asymmetrical bracelet style that I really, really love. So I hope that you guys feel the same way about it. So lots of kits for this one in the shop as well. If you want to grab that one, it's a really cool lightweight. It's a really lightweight bracelet and a great way to use up your chips, right? All right. I'm going to sit this one to the side. 
we've got two pairs of earrings to finish our show today. We're going to start with the easy ones. Well, they're both easy, but we're going to start with the pretty straightforward ones. Okay, so I got these beautiful hearts from Danielle. They look like red hearts, right? Like, or, or, oh, yeah, they are red hearts. They look like red hots. You guys know those candies, the little cinnamon candies. Super simple, but oh, yes, so, so pretty. There's so much sparkle with these. I love them. And they have like, they're metallic on the back. So even if they flip around on you, they're still super awesome. Like that's a great pair of Valentine's earrings that you can get away with wearing all year, right? All right. So these are so, so easy to put together. Two eye pins and a head pin is basically all you're going to need and an ear wire. And you've got yourself a really fun, fabulous pair of earrings. So on the bottom one, we're going to put it onto a head pin. Okay. And we're going to just do a simple loop. So just bend that wire right as it is exiting the bead. Trim off. And we're going to come in with our round nose pliers and make ourselves simple loop. Okay, so we've got ourselves a loop to start with. All right, the next bead is on an eye pin. So I'm going to open up the eye, attach it, close that back. We're going to thread on the next heart. Okay. And same thing. I'm just going to do a simple loop. So I'm going to bend the wire, come in with my cutter tool. Coming in with my round nose pliers, roll back, close up that loop. Got one more. And then we're just going to add an ear wire to it. Sometimes I'm one of those, you know, more is more and less is a bore. <laughs> but sometimes less really is more. And when it comes to something like just simple hearts, you just can't go wrong. You know, this is one of those pairs of earrings that you just throw on with anything. You know, you don't have to have a reason to put on these cute little hearts. You just don't, right? Make your heart little, little heart chain. And then all you got to do is just add the ear wire and you've got a really cool pair of earrings. I love them. They're so simple and so delicate, but so pretty. And even when the hearts spin around, they have that really awesome, like gold flash on the back of them. They're so pretty. So a little pair of hearts for your Valentine, right? Love them. I've got one more pair of heart earrings. Okay. So I'm going to sit these to the side. Maria says red cannot go wrong. Well, then you're going to love these. You're going to love these. So there's actually a pair of this. There is a kit of these earrings in the shop that has been, um, it's been relisted a couple of times that's in black and red. You guys loved them. There's still a couple of pairs left. This one is in all straight red. And these are uh, thanks to our dear friend, Sam who found these check glass hearts for me that have the flowers on them. So in the shop, there are black ones that have been there for a minute um, that got relisted not too long ago, but these are just straight up red. So, and you don't have to leave the chain long before everybody is like, whoa, those are really long. You can cut your chain pieces. You don't have to leave them like this. Okay. So let's put these together. I love these earrings. They're so sassy and so fun. And if you love red, like I do, this is like, this is a fantastic pair. So we're going to put these together real quick. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire wrap my little heart here. So I'm going to take my wire. It's drilled through the front, right? So we got to take our wire, put it on there, and we're going to treat it like a briolette. We're going to cross our wires over the top, right? Just crisscross. We're going to take one of those wires and bend it straight up and down and the other wire out this way. So we're making like an L out of our wires. Okay. Then we're going to wire wrap. And I tend to do like a, a messy little platform wrap here. That's not a, it's not an official straight up and down wire wrap. I just kind of, I don't know. I, it's like a slouchy sock, right? <laughs> Just make a little slouchy sock. You really can wire wrap however you want to. But 
I kind of like it like that, right? Okay, so then I'm going to take a Chet Glass Crescent, drop that down, then a little Chet, Chet Glass Flower. These also came from Sam. How pretty is that? I mean, just by itself, if you don't even want to add the chain, that with a loop and an ear wire is a beautiful earring. It really is. I'm always extra with everything, um, but yeah, it looks awesome just like that. All right, so I'm going to do a wrapped loop. Nope, not yet. I'm going to put, I'm going to put down, pop on a little metal bead just for a little flash. Okay, and then we're going to wire wrap. Okay, so up and over, rotate the wire, take the wire over to the other side, and just going to wire wrap in that space. Oops. Okay, I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off. All right, now we're gonna make the dangle for the back. And you can actually have, you could have already put the dangle on as you were wire wrapping, but I find that it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna wire wrap these little beads to hang at the bottom of our chain pieces. So I'm gonna put them onto a head pin. So for one of them, the longer one, I'm gonna do, there's another little check glass heart, right? A little red check glass heart, a check glass disc shaped little bead. And then another little metal, a little silver bead here. Okay. I'm going to wire wrap this, but I, before I do the wrap, I'm going to attach it to the chain. So we're going to get our wrapped loop started, bending that wire over the top of the pliers. We're going to come in with our round nose pliers, going up and over, rotate, and then take the wire over. Now, before we do those wraps, take it off of the tool. Okay, and you want to pull out your two little chain pieces. The longer one, I'm going to take and take the tail end of that wire and I'm going to stick it through that link, one of the ends. And then, whoops, <laughs> just going to slide those together. Maybe, come on. Okay. So there's no jump ring involved here. It's just wire wrapped directly to the chain. I'm going to hold that with some bent chain nose pliers. And then I'm going to wire wrap. You could do a simple loop here if you want. Just find that a wrapped loop here is a little bit more trustworthy with a dangle earring like this, where it's kind of long. Trim off the excess wire. Tuck in if you need to your ends. Okay, so there's one. Now the other one is a little bit different. So it's just a check glass round, a faceted round and a metal bead. Okay, and then another wrapped loop. So chain those pliers, bending the wire. We're going up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side, okay. Now, before you do your wraps, use your shorter piece of chain. Just snap those two together. Grab your loop. And do your wire wraps. Okay, and then you're going to come in with your cutter, trim off the excess. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take a little jump ring and you could have already done this step as you were wire wrapping, like I mentioned before, but it's okay to do it here at the end. So we're going to take a jump ring we're going to open it up and we're going to thread on our two pieces of chain. So there's the long one and then we're going to thread on the next. Okay. Now, before we close that, we're going to come to our, our heart here. We're going to turn our heart around over on the back and we want to hook this jump ring into that wrap. I wire wrapped really, really close to the bead. So 
Might have to do a little wiggle. A little wiggle. We haven't done a wiggle here in a while, you guys. I wire wrapped mine really close, but I can still get it through there. Hold on. Just have to give a little wiggle. And if not, there we go. We could undo it, but. All right, so attach your jump ring back there. Now remember, this is on the back, okay? And then you're just gonna thread on your two pieces of chain where they came off of my jump ring. So I apologize for that. There's one, there's the other. So basically this chain is gonna be hanging behind the heart, right? So you don't see this jump ring or any of that. It's all on the back. Just like that, all right? And of course you could have thread that on with your wire wrap, but you know, I was able to get it through there, no problem. So now the last step to this is just adding the ear wire and that's it. That's it. So the red ones are in the shop and if you, but if you like them with black, there's a red and black pair in the shop as well. They're just not new. They're not, they've been there. So you kind of have to, you'll have to look through the kit section to get to those, but there's the, the black and red ones. I think there's a few pairs still available. So there you go, you guys. I hope you love these earrings. I, I, I got to tell you, I am not a heart person. I, I And I've said that, I don't know, since we've been doing lives. Not much of a heart person, um, but they're kind of growing on me. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say they're definitely kind of growing on me. And I think it was these little, these little guys right here that did it. I just kind of fell in love with them. And you can't go wrong with red. I love all red. So, but yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm going to turn you guys around. We'll take a final look at everything and then I'll let you guys go so that you can enjoy the rest of your New Year's Eve into New Year's, you guys. See, Donna's a diehard heart person. There are some definite like heart lovers and I totally get that. I totally get that. So there are the little, the little heart ones. Aren't they pretty? They're so cute. <laughs> And then the bigger ones are a little bit more sassy. I'm actually gonna put this one on. So again, if this is too long for you, feel free to cut this chain, right? Feel free to cut the chain up because that's a shoulder duster earring and some people are gonna be like, whoa, that's too much, but I still love the look. So you can definitely take some off of your chain, just trim a couple of the links off and shorten it up a little bit. Or you can just leave them off altogether because like I said, just having that much is a really beautiful little earring. So I hope you love these because I think they're fabulous. <laughs> All right, let's just revisit our bracelets real quick. <laughs> so we've got our beautiful blue turquoise chips and our feather. This just kind of has that Southwestern feel to it. Love that. And then of course, these two beauties in the blue and in the green. I know it's hard to see them this direction, but sometimes it, it, it's nice to see them under different light, right? The beads in particular. So the blue and the silver and then the green and the antique brass, either one of these are gorgeous. They really are. I don't know which one I like the best because they're both just so awesome, but yeah. There you go, guys. Those are the kits for this week. Don't forget, there's also that really sassy maker mix, the pink and red maker mix that's in the shop. Don't forget to use your maker mixes, whichever ones you buy, uh, to create a piece of jewelry. You can also include your own jewelry, your own beads out of your collection um, and post that so that you are automatically entered in to win a a uh, shipment of goodies from me. I send out a shipment of goodies, of goodies once a month to whose ever name gets drawn. So it's not a judging contest. We're not looking at them and deciding who has the best design. We don't do that. Everybody's designs are amazing. We just take it. If you've put a design up with using a maker mix, we put your name in, we draw a name and one lucky person gets something fun. And I love putting those little packages together. So I hope you guys have been enjoying getting them. They're really fun. All right. That's it for me, you guys. That's it for 2021. Can you believe it? That's it. This is the last show of 2021. My hardwired group is not meeting this afternoon, um, but 
but I'll be right back with them on Tuesday. So if you want to come and enroll, join our Hardwired group. I do Hardwired Lives at 4.30s on Tuesdays and on Fridays. So if you need an extra Sarah fix for uh, your week, you can come and be a part of that. You guys, I'll be right here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. with our first show of 2022. Brand new project for you guys. I have no idea what it's going to be. Haven't even thought about it yet. I'm still kind of in like holiday mode, right? Haven't really settled yet. I'm feeling kind of unsettled in general at the moment. And I think it's just because so many things are changing in my immediate future. Like I'm about to make a big move. So um, I'm, a little, I'm a little antsy right now. <laughs> But one constant that I have is you guys, and I thank you for that. So yeah, that's it for me. You guys, please have an amazing, wonderful, most importantly, safe, please be safe, New Year's, right? And I will see you guys next week. Good riddance to 2021. Indeed, Gia. I feel that in my soul. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a great afternoon, a great weekend, and happy new year. Bye, guys. <laughs>